Hello and welcome to Pseudocode. In this video, we are going to talk about HLD versus LLD. Now, I know you might be wondering that what is there new to talk about HLD versus LLD. So, what I'm going to cover in this video is we will talk about HLD and LLD interviews. What is the expectation in these interviews? What you need to do in order to prepare for both of them? And also, we will talk about how HLD and LLD happens in real world, like in real world scenario where people like people like you, people like me, software engineers, how LLD and HLD are used at job in real time. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the definition of HLD and LLD interviews uh, with respect to software engineering like how the format of interviews are, what you need to do. And then we'll talk about uh, what it means to do HLD and LLD when you are on job. So high level design interviews, the expectation from the candidate is to collect all the requirements, first and foremost, the functional and non-functional requirements, uh, understand the costing, the performance, the expectations of interview in this case, like whether they want to uh, develop a highly available system or highly scalable system or a highly consistent system or maybe all of it. What are the cost considerations? What are the performance considerations? All of this knowledge has to be gathered while uh, when the HLD interview starts. Basically, this is the collection of requirements and expectations. And then it turns into more of a discussion between the candidate and interviewer where uh, you have to come up with uh, an overall design of the system, selecting various components uh, which can fulfill the functional as well as the non-functional requirements while meeting the constraints. What happens in these kind of interviews is it is not hard to come up with uh, the overall design. It is hard to uh, balance the trade-offs to find out what solution works and what doesn't. And I will tell you a fun fact. There is no one absolute solution to any problem. There can be multiple ways in which you can design Uber or Facebook or Netflix and so on. There are multiple ways which you, in which you can do that. It would depend what is the context, what are the functional and non-functional requirements, how are the different constraints, or constraints of the system that are being uh, put in front of you to meet them. And depending on all these conditions, you will come up with solutions. So most part of discussions in such kind of interviews goes on in weighing the trade-offs. You have approach one, you have approach two, you have one to three trade-offs of approach one and one to three trade-offs of approach two. What kind of trade-offs are you willing to accept or let go in that particular context? That is a very big part of such kind of interviews. And in that part, you uh, not only have to have the knowledge of such kind of systems you also have to have a good decision making and be a little creative because sometimes the answer is the hybrid of both the approaches you have to go with a mixed approach of both the solutions that you are presenting or you are discussing with the interview right so this is what goes on in a high level design interview you uh, are given a whiteboard and you have to draw out the whole uh, system you have to pick the components select data stores caching messaging different type of architectures maybe even driven maybe transactional you have to think about availability you have to think about the number of transactions number of requests the scale the number of users or whatever components are there to design you have to think about all of them and then come up with an overall architecture the job doesn't get over here after coming coming up with that architecture uh, uh, which fulfills all the requirements and fulfills all the constraints you might uh, also even have to go into the details of future of that architecture like as a, as a good software engineer as a good engineer who is like really strong at system design you should understand that just after designing the system you should know what the system caters to what are the requirements the system fulfills and what are the places or the scenarios where the system is going to fail or what are the limitations of the system and then what would be the follow-up what would be the version two of the system if you have such kind of foresight if you can uh, show your skills where you can think uh, ahead in the future and you can know what are the problems in the current system how you can solve it that is a very big plus uh, in an interview because guess what this happens at the real job as well right maybe you join a company where there is an existing system you have to understand the system and find out where the system can fail or where where is the scope of improvement and then work on those improvements or you might have to design a system from scratch and then maybe after uh, six months or a year you have to uh, come up with the improvements for that system if you can think about all of this ahead of time you might end up having a very performant and good system in version one itself i'm just saying like this is what the expectations are that's about high level system design uh, if you're preparing for any high level system design interview there is a playlist that i have created please go check it out it is linked in the description now coming back to low level design what is the expectation in low level design interviews in 
some companies, uh, these interviews are also known as machine coding interviews or uh, object oriented interviews, where what you are supposed to do is you will be given a problem statement. And in some cases, you have to draw out a low level design on whiteboard. And in some cases, you actually have to code the whole application. And those rounds are mostly are known as machine coding rounds. So for example, you will be given a problem uh, like design a parking lot or uh, write a logging and matrix collecting system. So what is the expectation when it's a machine coding now? You would be given about two to four hours. You would be given the whole definition uh, of the problem or the requirements in, in, a, in a paper or like in a mail or something. And you would be allowed to ask some clarifying questions. Mostly the requirements will be covered in that document itself, but you can ask a clarifying questions if you have any doubts. And then in those three to four hours, what you have to do is you have to maybe uh, draw and come up with a class diagram, UML diagram, and you know code all of that up, like uh, code all the classes, interface, and whatever they have asked you to support for example uh, they can ask you like uh, design a system like Twitter and the expectation is that I should be able to uh, post a tweet and I should be able to fetch all the tweet, uh, tweets for me and I should be able to comment on tweets or reply on tweets like this is a standard uh, question for a machine coding or an LLD round that is what the expectation would be now the outcome of this as I said would be the code for all those requirements plus maybe some idea about unit testing and integration testing like how you're going to test your code and again in this case also you should know what your code is doing what it is capable of uh, achieving and you should also know where it is going to fail or what are the scope of improvements right this part uh, covers the whole scenario how low level design interviews are carried out then coming back to uh, the LLD interviews where you have to just uh, draw it out on a pen paper or a whiteboard in that case you might not have to go into the coding part but you might have to go uh, and into defining uh, the how the UML diagrams are going to look like look like how the class diagrams are going to look like how you would model the data how you would represent the data and what are the kind of data structures that that you will use in order to fulfill the requirements of uh, you know like uh, replying to the tweets or showing all the tweets or uh, posting uh, posting to the page collecting feed and all that right there also the expectation is that you understand the, the ds uh, and algo that goes into the design you understand the object oriented concepts and how to apply them in order to build an application like that you understand how to test that application and how to make that application performant for example if in that application you have done everything right but uh, the way you are querying the database is not right or it is not optimized then you may be asked like can you optimize this part or what do you think is wrong with this part right so it comes to uh, understanding of dsl go as well as uh, application of uh, object oriented concepts and uh, coding a uh, good and performance system and also telling out the ways of how to test it or how to improve it that is about low level design interviews now we have covered that part like how hld or lld happens in inter interviews now let's talk about what it means like why are you getting tested on these uh, skills right why uh, it is so important for you to perform well in these rounds because guess what this will happen when you go to a job when you start working right when we talk about low level design uh, if you are at sd1 or sd2 level this is going to be your everyday job like you would be adding features to an existing application or you might be writing an application from scratch you would be designing the uh, data models for that you will be defining the database queries and you know writing the code for that application and also you have to make sure of testing that application right Testing is a very big part of software development and of application development. I'll talk about it on some other day. Let's not digress. So yeah, that will be the expectation when you're on the job. And uh, how does low level design comes to you? So for that, let's understand how high level design happens in big companies, right? So high level design actually, uh, you know, the process starts like there will be business requirements, there would be some product people uh, involved, there would be um, uh, high level architects or like heavily experienced engineers would be involved in the process of creating the whole architecture for the system, you know, like the whole system design. I think I have said this in one of my uh, previous videos that one person doesn't do uh, high level design. It takes like a lot of people to come up with that kind of design right so the product and the business folks will uh, come up with the requirements or in in cases of like consultancy companies it will be clients who will come up with the requirements like see these are the requirements we have we have this many, this many users we want a payroll tra tracking system or we want uh, an integration system or we want a news feed system and so on and so forth right like they can have any kind of requirements and those people will be coming in with the set of requirements and then uh, high level solution architects or uh, principal engineers would be involved in creating a high level design for this system 
exist for that system which of course fulfills the functional and non-functional requirements and then that high level design is broken into different pieces like you whenever you solve a problem you bro break it into sub problems and then solve one sub problem at a time similarly the whole design uh, the high level design which is built by uh, all the senior level engineers and architects and company it is broken into different uh, areas into the different services and components and then then those components are given to sd threes or tools in order to develop it right and then uh, maybe if you are sd one or two in a company you would get to develop on that you will build that application you will try to monitor it try test and you know uh, provide the implemented uh, uh, component which is a part of a very big system so this is what happens when we talk about high level design uh, in uh, in companies like how it happens so this is the whole chain of how uh, the things go about in companies and that is why given your level what is the experience you have what is the kind of exposure that you have had what are the kind of systems that you have worked on you get interviewed on these two capabilities of low level design and high level design i hope i have clarified the process of these two different kind of interviews right now coming to how to prepare for these interviews uh, i know like there is no uh, one shot uh, a book or one shot uh, resource in order to prepare for system design like there are a lot of good resources out there uh, you can refer those resources for LLD as well like there are uh, a lot of resources a lot of books but uh, again I will make make a video on uh, resources to refer or like top 10 questions or something like that if I feel uh, that can be useful for you I'll create a video on that on uh, some other time I hope this uh, differentiation and the explanation of these two different kind of interviews and uh, these two different kinds of uh, uh, stages of software development is clear to you. If you have any questions, any doubts, if you want to add any points to this, please feel free to comment and I'll try to answer. And uh, as a sneak peek, uh, I am working on some more uh, courses on uh, around system design and the different design patterns and concepts. You, I hope you will get to see them soon. Till then, uh, take care. See you in the next video. Thank you.